Today's video is sponsored by Ana Luisa. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you five easy steps you can take to reverse PCOS naturally. PCOS is short for polycystic ovarian syndrome and is the number one cause of female infertility worldwide, affecting one in 10 women of childbearing age. Besides infertility, other symptoms of PCOS include abnormal periods, weight gain, excess hair growth, especially on the face, back, and stomach, and acne. Now, if you have been diagnosed with PCOS, it's likely you have been told that it is irreversible. You might have even been told that it's genetic and there's nothing you can do about it except for manage symptoms. Well, I am here to tell you that PCOS is reversible. There is something you can do about it and you don't have to live with it forever. To be diagnosed with PCOS, you have to have at least two out of the three main symptoms, abnormal periods, high testosterone, and or cysts on your ovaries. The steps I am going to outline today can help you to make your period regular again, they can help you to decrease testosterone and balance your hormones, and decrease ovarian cysts, and your diagnosis can be reversed. So in today's video, I'm going to give you five easy steps you can take to reduce your symptoms and reverse PCOS. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share and make sure to subscribe. And make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. We're going to start off the video today talking about what causes PCOS because understanding what causes it can help you to understand why the steps I'm going to outline work. And then we will get into the steps. What causes PCOS? Now, there is a lot of confusion around PCOS. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of women who are diagnosed are told that the condition is lifelong and prescribed a medication such as the birth control pill. And this can help to improve symptoms by altering hormones, but it doesn't address the root cause. But do we even know what causes PCOS? There has to be some reason why rates are increasing year after year. The answer is yes. The root cause of PCOS is insulin resistance. Insulin is a hormone responsible for lowering blood sugar and storing the glucose in our cells. Every time we eat, blood sugar rises, and as a result, the pancreas pumps out insulin. But insulin resistance occurs when our insulin levels are high for long periods of time. This causes our cells to stop responding to insulin in the way that they should, because they're basically being overwhelmed by it. And this ties in with PCOS because high insulin levels, also known as hyperinsulinemia, is what causes the symptoms that define PCOS. Every month, just before ovulation, there should be a big spike in the hormone estrogen. All estrogen is made from testosterone, but high insulin levels, as is the case with hyperinsulinemia, block the ovaries from converting it, and the spike in estrogen doesn't happen. So of course, then you have high testosterone, since you didn't ovulate, the eggs remain in the ovaries and become cysts. And those are the three main symptoms of PCOS that we spoke about earlier. Irregular periods, high testosterone, and ovarian cysts. By addressing and reversing insulin resistance, PCOS reverses as well. Now before we get into the steps you can take to reverse PCOS, I'm going to take a quick moment to tell you about today's sponsor, Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa offers sustainable, high-quality jewelry without the markup on price. All of the jewelry I am wearing today is from Ana Luisa, so my earrings, my two rings, the necklace, my bracelet, all Ana Luisa. I have been a big fan of this company for several years. They only use high-quality materials, including recycled gold, silver, freshwater pearls, and lab-grown diamonds, all of which are ethically sourced and hypoallergenic. And as I mentioned before, they are committed to fair pricing without huge markups. They have a wide selection of rings, earrings, necklaces, bracelets, and more in classic styles that won't go out of fashion. Like I said, I have been buying from Ana Luisa for several years. I can attest to the quality. This isn't costume jewelry that's going to tarnish and leave your fingers green. <laughs> Honestly, that is the worst. 
Anna Luisa was kind enough to send me a few pieces for this collaboration, including these two rings. And these have quickly joined my staple jewelry pieces that I wear pretty much every day. I actually had a couple other gold rings. I think one of them might have been from Anna Luisa as well that were my go-tos. But when I moved a couple of months ago, honestly, those are the one thing that I haven't been able to find. I'm still hoping they turn up, but in the meantime, these two rings are my go-to. If you guys would like to check out Anna Luisa, you can click the link that is in the description box down below. Thank you again to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. All right, now let's get into the steps you can take to reverse PCOS. Number one, reduce fructose. Fructose is a type of simple sugar that makes up 50% of table sugar and is also found naturally in fruit. Fructose has to be processed by the liver in order to be used, whereas glucose, which is another type of sugar, doesn't need to be converted by the liver and can be used for energy right away. Now, fructose actually has a lower glycemic index score than glucose does, meaning less insulin is needed to process it. So you might think this means it is better for insulin resistance and PCOS. But because it needs to be processed by the liver, it can actually reduce insulin sensitivity and contribute to insulin resistance. High dose fructose can induce intestinal permeability, oxidative stress, inflammation, and fatty liver, and therefore cause damage that leads to insulin resistance. The main sources of fructose in our diet are sugar-sweetened beverages and fruit juices. These drinks allow us to consume massive amounts of fructose that we wouldn't be able to consume from whole food sources such as fruit. The average American consumes between 85 to 100 grams of fructose every single day. This is equivalent to 25 teaspoons of sugar. Now, of course, pop is a big problem. A bottle of Coke, for example, has 35 grams of fructose, but fruit juice is also a concern. One cup of orange juice has 14 grams of fructose, whereas one orange in whole food form contains only six. Avoid sugar-sweetened beverages and juices as much as possible. Opt for whole food fruits instead. And even better if you choose low-carb options such as berries. Number two, take apple cider vinegar. Taking one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar diluted in water before your meals can also help to reverse PCOS. Apple cider vinegar helps to speed up how quickly our cells can absorb glucose. Studies have shown that consuming apple cider vinegar before a meal can significantly lower the blood sugar and insulin response. One study done had participants take one and a half tablespoons of apple cider vinegar two minutes before a high carb meal that included a bagel and orange juice. They found that the group that consumed apple cider vinegar were up to 34% more insulin sensitive an hour after eating compared to the group that consumed the placebo. This meant their blood sugar was lower and more stable. So by taking apple cider vinegar before a meal, you can help to improve insulin sensitivity and reverse PCOS. Number three, eat carbs last. Eating carbohydrate rich foods at the end of your meal after your protein, non-starchy vegetables and fat can also help to make the insulin response to a meal less drastic. One study done on type two diabetics had participants eat the same meal three days in a row. On the first day, they ate the carbohydrate portion of the meal first, then 10 minutes later, ate the protein and the vegetable portion. On the second day, they ate the protein and the vegetables first, waited 10 minutes, and then ate the carbs. And on the final day, they ate everything together. Insulin levels were tested before eating and after eating every 30 minutes for the following three hours. Insulin levels were significantly lower after the meal when the carbohydrate portion was eaten last. Number four, reduce carbs. Low carb diets have become very popular in recent years, mostly for weight loss, but also for PCOS as well. And the reason they are so effective for PCOS is once again, because they improve insulin sensitivity. One study followed 11 women with PCOS for six months. The study involved participants eating a low carb diet. And by the end, all of the women who completed the study lost weight, lowered their free testosterone and their fasting insulin. Two of the women even got pregnant during the study, despite having previously struggled with infertility. The researchers concluded a low carb ketogenic diet led to a significant reduction in weight, 
free testosterone, and fasting serum insulin in women with obesity and PCOS over a six month period. The reason that reducing your carb intake helps to improve insulin sensitivity is because carbs are what trigger insulin the most. There are three macronutrients, carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Carbohydrates spike insulin drastically, whereas protein and fat have a moderate or no effect at all. So if you're trying to keep insulin low, it makes sense to reduce the foods that increase it the most. Now, when I refer to low carb diets, I'm talking about eating less than 100 grams of carbohydrates in a day. If you reduce that further to less than 50 total carbs in a day, you will see faster results, but do what works for you and what you can stick to. Another 2017 review looked at studies where participants ate less than 45% of their calories from carbs, which is significantly more than 50 grams a day. The study concluded that reducing carbohydrate load can reduce circulating insulin levels, improve hormonal imbalance, and resume ovulation to improve pregnancy rates compared to usual diet. If you do want to eat more carbohydrates, that's fine. Like I said, do what works for you, but make sure to implement both tips two and three, which is the apple cider vinegar and eating carbs last, because this will help a lot. Number five, build muscle. Now, I do think that diet is the most important component when it comes to reversing PCOS, but exercise can help as well. And the type of exercise you do matters. Exercise is beneficial for two reasons. The first is, is that when you are exercising, your muscle cells are able to absorb glucose without insulin. And the second reason is that more muscle mass means your body can store more glucose. This is because our muscles are where most glucose is stored in the body. So if you have more muscle mass, you have more room for the glucose to be stored and your insulin sensitivity will improve. Now, in terms of the type of exercise you should be doing, resistance training has proven to be the most beneficial. But the best part is you don't need to kill yourself for hours or even an hour a day at the gym. More does not always equal better, quality over quantity. Even at just 10 to 15 minutes a day of basic body weight movements, squats, lunges, maybe some push-ups, this can help a lot. A 2019 study looked at the effect short duration resistance training had on insulin sensitivity in overweight men. They did three resistance training sessions a week for six weeks, with each session only lasting 15 to 20 minutes. During the workout, they did one set of nine different exercises at 80% of their one rep max. After the six weeks, participants saw an increase in their insulin sensitivity. Now, of course, this study was done in men, but the same insulin sensitivity effects can be seen in women. So if you're currently killing yourself with cardio at the gym, maybe lay off that and try resistance training instead. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. So to quickly recap the five steps you can take. Number one, reduce fructose. Number two, take apple cider vinegar. Number three, eat carbohydrates last. Number four, reduce carbs. And number five, build muscle. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have PCOS and if you've started taking any steps to reverse it. I love chatting with you guys in the comment section and hearing about your experiences. I try to answer all comments within at least the first couple hours that my video is posted. So even if you just want to say hi, comments really help to support my channel as well. So I'm very grateful. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. And remember to check out today's sponsor, Anna Luisa. I will put the link in the description box down below. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video on PCOS and genetics. I will link it right here. If you want to catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you want to check out my coaching programs, I have a keto diet coaching program and a carnivore diet coaching program. You can find those here. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.